The following video is based on the book Being Watched, Yvonne Rayner and the 1960s by Carrie Lambert Beatty. The following video is based on the book Art Scenes by Pablo Hel Guerrera. Oh man, I was watching the sports game and there was this really pretty girl came and sat down next to me at the sports bar and it was like jamming on a Sunday night. Perfect, Jesus, so what'd you talk to her about? I was just like, oh man, the Seahawks are like ramming and jamming this month and she was like, fuck yeah. Thank God. Did you get a number then, or anything? Fuck yeah, yeah. Okay, but like, what'd you do last night? Because I thought you were going to show up and you didn't. Well, speaking of girls, I ran into somebody I hadn't seen in a long time. And we went out for coffee and hung out. Uh-huh, yeah. Of course, on my phone, I had the score going the whole time. So, like, I knew my priorities. Right, right, right. That's so cool. Ugh, I feel like my dead uncle can make a better work of art than every work of art that's been shown in this gallery since 1997. P.S. is it 1997 because it reeks of the 90s in here. Yeah. The following video is based on the book Art Workers, Radical Practice in the Vietnam War Era by Julia Brian Wilson, Professor of Modern and Contemporary Art at the University of California, Berkeley. This is the hardest job ever. The following video is based on the book How to See a Work of Art in Total Darkness by Darby English, Director of the Research and Academic Program at the Sterling and Francine Clark Art Institute. This artwork is so good. Oh yeah, and did you know that the artist is African American? What? Now I can't even see it anymore. The following video is based on the book Forgetting the Art World by Pamela M. Lee, Professor of Modern and Contemporary Art, Theory and Criticism at Stanford University. Oh, come on. Can you just get us out of here? 
It smells like paint and resin. And like blue foam. I hate hummus. I'm sick of hummus. I hate hummus. The following video is based on the book The Infinite Line, Remaking Art After Modernism by Bryony Fair, Professor of History of Art at University College London. <laughs> The following video is based on the book The Return of the Real, The Avant-Garde at the End of the Century by Hal Foster. The following video is based on the book 9.5 Theses on Art and Class by Ben Davis. Oh, hi Kate. Hi. Hi. You, you were looking a little sad there. Is there anything wrong? Well, I'm just having a really hard time understanding art and class right now. Oh, yeah. That's a really complicated subject, but... I think if we work together, we can learn about it! So one thing I don't understand is like, who really controls like the art world and the sphere of the art and stuff? Hmm, well, that's a pretty easy question to answer actually. You know why? Why? Because the same people who control everything control the art world too! What? Uncomplicated. Yeah, it makes it so easy to remember who controls everything! Yay! Yay! Yeah! Well, what does that mean for art then? Yeah, well, that means art is a luxury good. You mean like this right here? Well, yeah. If you own that, that makes you look like you're smart, powerful, and rich, and influential. Just like the people who control the art market. Yeah! Yeah. So what's another role for art then? Well, art is also a repository for wealth. So like if you were gonna buy some art, you're like putting some money in. Just like this. It's almost like if you're buying a stock and then later you can sell it and you can kind of get like even more money out. Exactly! You got it! Wow. Yeah! You can make a lot of money on an art. Yeah, and then selling it again for way more than you paid for it. Yeah. And then I guess like art can be used as a way of like supposedly giving back to the community. Yeah, well that's a really great thing that super rich people do to look like they're being good people. How does that work? Well, basically they get to put their money into art give it to the community. But really, they're just not having to pay taxes on any of that money and whitewashing all the bad stuff that they've done. Yeah. Well, 
well, like, what about art that is kind of radical or goes against the ruling class ideology? Yeah, well, you might think that'll do some things, but let's try it out and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Make it some art. Wow, that's some superior craftsmanship you got going on right there. Thank you. Yeah, you're okay. welcome. Okay, here's what I came up with. Ooh, that's beautiful. I actually feel kind of like I did something just now. Right? You feel like you did, but actually you're just contributing to the market because some other really rich person is going to buy that and then sell it again and make a bunch of money! Yeah! Well, what are we going to do? Oh, hmm. Well, I have a crazy idea. What is it? Well, we could work together! You mean if we all cooperate and band together and unionize, we could join the class struggle of the working class? Because most artists actually are pretty much working class because they haven't fully realized the entrepreneurial middle class dream. But if we all get together, you think we could actually change the situation of art and the art world and the real world and overthrow the ruling class ideology? The following video is based on the book The Art Architecture Complex by Hal Foster, Townsend Martin, class of 1917, Professor of Art and Archaeology at Princeton University.